Namaste. Welcome to this Docker series. In this video, we'll shed light upon three main topics. What is Docker? What do we use Docker for? And the Docker architecture. Let's get started. Let's understand what is Docker. As a child, you must have played the game of puzzles, wherein you join all the pieces of the puzzle to form an image. The image that is given in the box or in the instruction manual. Now, each and every piece of this puzzle is important to complete the image. Even if a single piece is missing, that image remains incomplete. So, we store all the pieces in a single box, the box that comes with the puzzle. We can take the box anywhere and we can solve the puzzle to form the exactly same image. We can even share the box with our friend, with our cousin, anyone, and or she will also be able to form the exact same image. Similarly, in the software world, we need different pieces that is source code, configuration file, libraries, etc. Docker helps in putting all of these pieces in a single box that is called as container. Now, these container have every single piece of the puzzle or in our case, artifacts to run the application. Now, this container or these boxes can be run on any other machine, be it your local machine, be it your cloud or etc. The application will run exactly the same. You'll see the exactly same page. Now you cannot say, but it works on my machine. The problem is solved. There is an open source platform which provides the ability to package and run the application in an isolated environment called as container. Now Docker provides tooling and platform to manage these containers. You can develop your application and its supporting components using containers. These containers, remember a puzzle box, can be shared with anyone for further testing or for the development. Once your development is complete, the same container can be deployed to production as is. This will work exactly in the manner it worked on your local machine. Be the production environment, physical server, on-premise machine or cloud, it doesn't matter. And consistent delivery. To understand this point, let's take an example of a typical SDLC lifecycle. Developer writes his code on his local machine, tests the same locally, and then he thinks it's ready for the peer review. He sends the container for a peer review to his lead or his peer, anyone uh, senior. Then the lead or the approver verifies the code, runs the container, sees everything is working fine, and then deploys it to development environment. Now, in this development environment, he can run multiple checks like sonar scan, Fortify scan, etc., whatever is there in your CI pipeline. So he runs it and then deploys it to development environment. If everything is running fine, as in if all the automated tests are running good, then the same container is moved to test environment for testers to validate the environment. Once the testers validate it and if they find any bug, they raise it to the developer. The developer then makes the necessary changes, fixes, etc., and then updates the same base image and then deploys it as a container. This will again go through dev and then again test and then testers will test again. So everything is validated, verified and tested properly. All the automated functional and the manual tests are complete. Suppose that this updated image is good to go for production. Now this base image should work exactly as it worked on other environments. We don't have to worry if the environments are same or not because everything we need to run our application is in that image. Do you see how fast it can be? Just update the image whenever you find the bug and then it can be promoted to higher environments. Another use is responsive deployment and scaling. With containers, just like we saw, the application become highly portable. Like you can scale up or scale down very easily. You just have to bring up containers or bring down containers, scaling up or scaling down. And it will work exactly how we need on any machine. Third use case is running more workloads on the same hardware. Scaling up and scaling down is easy. But you can do the same on the on the same machine or on the same server. Thereby, you will be efficiently using the resources of that machine. You'll save on the compute cost. Let's so understand the Docker architecture. Docker uses a client server architecture. The different components of the architecture are the Docker client, which is Docker itself, the Docker daemon, which is also called as Docker D, and Docker registries. Docker client is the primary way most of us will interact with Docker. Which means when we use Docker commands like Docker run, Docker ps, Docker pull, etc., Docker client sends 
these commands to the docker daemon or docker d to carry them out. Also, docker composes another docker client. Docker daemon listens to docker api request from the docker client to manage docker objects. Now, what are docker objects? These are images, containers, networks, volume, etc. Last part as in the registry. Registry is a place where docker images are stored. It's like we use git to store source code. Similarly, docker images are stored on registries. Now, by default, or docker uses docker hub as the default registry to pull and push images. Means whenever we run docker pull or docker run, it fetches the image directly from docker hub if you haven't mentioned any other registry. Let's talk very briefly about docker, some of the docker objects. So anything that you create in docker is an object like image, container, network, etc. Images. What is an image? Image is a read-only template which has all the instructions to create a docker container. Most of the times we will use an image which uses another docker image as the base image. For example, we will use an Ubuntu base image and on top of that we will install Apache web server. Then we will install our application and we'll be able to run it. To create our own image, we'll have to write the set of instructions in the docker file and run it. The instruction in the docker creates a layer so that whenever you're making any changes, only that layer is rebuilt. This really makes docker very lightweight. A container is a runnable instance of the same image. So you have a template, and based on that template, an instance of an image is created. You can create start, stop image using Docker commands. Well, by default, containers are isolated from other containers and from the host machine as well. Let's see an example. Well, let me type in docker run hyphen i t ubuntu slash bin slash bash. Now, when we run this command, Docker will check for the Ubuntu image locally. And if it doesn't find it, it will check for the image from the registry, which in our case is Docker Hub, because we are not mentioning any other registry. Then it will download it to create a container from Ubuntu image. Meantime, Docker allocates a read write file system to the container to create or modify a file in the local system. Docker also creates a network interface and connects it to the default network. We'll use host's network connection to talk to the external network. Docker starts the container and executes bin bash because we have mentioned in the command at the start. So if you just run docker run it ubuntu, the container will run and exit because we're not asking it to do anything. When we mention bin bash, that means it will open the terminal and it will wait for a command. So here the flags hyphen i hyphen t, it means the container is running interactively and is attached to the terminal. I stands for interactive and T stands for terminal. Docker is written in Go programming language and it uses Linux kernel features to provide the Docker functionality. Docker uses namespace technology for the isolation that it creates of the other containers as well as with the host machine. When we run a container, it creates a set of namespaces for that container. These namespaces provide a layer of isolation. Each aspect of the container runs in a different namespace and also the access is limited as in within that namespace itself. So that's it. These were some of the basic terms of the Docker. If you haven't installed Docker yet, please check my Docker installation videos. Thank you.